which is uh, Stacy Gage, uh, five-star running back. I spoke with uh, DJ Lagway in our interview, which was a phenomenal interview. If you guys are here and have not Great seen way. that interview, leave. <laughs> Go watch that interview because it's not good. Uh, an incredible young man. With a great head on his shoulders, but I talked to him about Stacy Gage because Stacy tweeted at him, "Hey, it's wherever you go, Big Brother, I'm following." And I'm like, well, I mean, if you say something, you know, say, like, what's what's up? So he released his top eight, which we did end up in it. I don't know if Colorado ended up. I want to say they did. I believe they did. Of course, I believe I believe, so. I believe Colorado is in his top eight as well. And I I've talked about that in a couple of Dion videos where look, I feel like a lot of kids are gonna. Pick, you'd be dumb not to pick Colorado in your top whatever right now because it's just. Why not, right? So, I, I like Stacy Gage for us, but again, the kid's a stud, right? I'm sure Miami's going to be his, in his ear for a bag. Actually, let me, let me let's see what his top eight is. It, it, it is here. I got it right here. Okay, thank it's, you. It's uh, Florida, Penn State, uh, Penn OU. State. That's yep. that's a that's OU, a weird uh, one. O- Oklahoma, Ohio State, Alabama, USC. Go to Lane, uh, Colorado. You call that one, and Miami. <laughs> All right, so here's my my look. I feel like Oklahoma doesn't really intimidate me, but they have, they did have a great recruiting class. But I'm not too too concerned with them. USC, I don't know about that one. I feel like I mean, look, Lincoln Riley's out there doing a great job, but and, and it is an explosive offense. But to me, it feels like it's more of a high flying offense. It wouldn't really complement Stacey Gage. I could be wrong here, but I feel like it wouldn't. It's, it doesn't fit his style. He's a big running back. Where I feel like an Alabama, Alabama scares me. Alabama, be, Alabama being on that list scares the living shit out of me. Yeah, um, it should. It should scare everybody. Anybody, any, any recruit that you're after that you really, especially just, a are, big are, tank of a running back. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, because they've never produced those. One or two. Um, so look with him, <laughs> with him, you know, having those. I mean, that's a, that's a stud stud lineup. There's a lot of great schools that are really competitive. Uh, I feel good about Florida. Again, Miami being in there scares me too as well, but because of what they've been able to do on the offensive line. But there isn't a quarterback. This is one thing we haven't really mentioned: is they don't have a quarterback for twenty twenty three class. Or no. no, they because they both both of them come decommitted, I believe. There was Jaden Rashad, and there was another one. The other one decommitted before Jaden did, and then Jaden decommitted. Can you can you yeah, fact so they, check that? It, and I don't think they've yeah, got anything they, for twenty four yet. So it's kind of funny because they have a phenomenal offensive line they've recruited, and they've got some. They've got Mark Fletcher as a running back, so great, great pickup there. But outside of that, I mean, they have, like, we got Tyler Van Dyke, and I'm, again, yeah, uh, who, who had an amazing season. I feel like we keep over like who's going to throw the football? Who are they blocking for? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, so it, it's going to be interesting. But look, Florida has been finding themselves on some studs, okay, and um for top top players. I want to say they are on another a safety. I can't think of his name right now. I got I got to learn a whole new a whole new. Uh, slew of recruits here uh, for this next year <laughs> to get off the top of my head. I've got the list here. Um, they they do have Lester. a quarterback recruit, by the way. Uh, Emory Williams, uh, three-star from yeah, that doesn't count. Florida. That doesn't count. Stop yeah. it. That doesn't count. It's not, it's not the guy that's going to take the... Yeah, the, no, they take the, the reins. Um, elite 24-24 quarterback, Charles Lester. He's like six, I believe, or six quarterback in the country and 26 overall. So I want to say he's a five-star. We landed in his top five as well. So... Look, we're making some moves quickly in the 2024. Eliza rushing seems like a shoe in. We've got 100 ball, 100 percent right now uh, in 247. So I'm ready to get to 2024 because I know last year was when we really got this ball going. Was 2023 things started moving? It was really fun to watch. It was exciting. Obviously, the orange and blue game was exciting. But talking season it is just that we get to talk about the recruits and what's to come. But we won't really have much to talk about until the guys show up for camp. So I'm I'm, I'm hoping some of these guys commit early. It feels like a lot of them are for them to release their top five and top four because these top players know that to recruit a great class, they need to get in as soon as possible so other recruits can see, okay, I see Agreed. what's what's happening here. And for us to be landing in these top recruits early, again, I'm going off of what I watched last year. I felt like Billy was behind the eight ball. Even in 2023, he was behind the eight ball because he was wrapping up 2022 and trying to start 2023 all sure. at the same time. And I felt like when we came in, half the guys were already committed for 2023. You know what I mean? And he was yep. trying to pick up the pieces afterwards. So he's he's in it right now at the right time. We were, we were getting our big commits just a little bit too late into the season. If we can land, we've already landed a few now. If we can land two or three a month going into June and July and then into visiting season, if we can have way more for game one already committed and then have a slew come in to visit, that's what's going to be the difference between 2024 and 2023. Yeah, look, I would I would be willing to say at this point, based off what we saw in this last recruiting cycle, that 
the recruiting efforts are almost, I want to say 80% the coaches, maybe 70% the coaches, and 30, 30% the, the players that are committed. The sure. players turn out to be a bigger uh, a recruiting factor a lot of times than some of the coaches. The, co- the, like the coaches are on the road. They're practicing. They have limitations on when they can contact, what type of contact they can have. Dude, the players the players are all over social media and they're pulling each other from place to place to place. Look, if you can get a good, good couple of guys, good solid guys that you know are, are, are locked in and they are are high level, big personalities, guys that are willing to go out there and be kind of a face of the next class. They can be sometimes your, your, your ace in the hole. And that look, they can't win the moms. You know, the coaches have to win the moms and dads, right? That's that's where, you know, coming in and sitting down and having dinner and that in-home visit matters a ton. But these kids, I mean, they 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 are they are they're they, they can be easily pressured, especially if you've got a couple of guys who are are big time uh you know with with their personalities and, and know what they're trying to accomplish so you get a couple of those guys early on and yeah you're 100 percent right it changes the whole dynamic for what the uh the coaching staff is up against when it comes to trying to get some of these big guys uh to, to make their their pledge yeah no i i totally agree i think that's going to be again the headstone for that class so DJ Lagway is a massive one. Stacy Gage would be a huge one. Elijah Rushing, who's a top twenty, top twenty player, would be even a bigger one. So, the quicker these guys get in, the, the more comfortable I'll feel for that twenty twenty four class. It's got to be top top ten without a shadow of a doubt for the look. Billy's not going anywhere year two, no matter what the outcome is, unless it's like a zero and a twelve season. But I don't see him going anywhere. I really don't. I think three three years is is, is a minimum for sure, and. But I also think some things have to go the right way for that third year to really to not just be like a, a fill in right. and an actual possibility for things to turn on the, on the right direction. And then this class is going to be a huge one. Um, 